Uh, my name is Hank Nurse. I'm uh, with the New York Academy of Sciences, and I'm here with Britta Chang from SRI International. Um, and, and we want to talk a little bit today about applying some of the things that we've learned um, here today. So in 2014, the Academy published a white paper citing a gap in 21st century skills, uh, competencies like communication, collaboration, creativity, and leadership as a contributing factor to what we call the STEM paradox. Uh, employers reporting that an inability to fill STEM-related jobs despite the fact um, that there are adequate numbers of STEM graduates coming out of school. In 2014 and 2015, I'm sorry, in 2015 and 16, the OECD and the World Economic Forum issued reports highlighting the importance of developing social and emotional skills, such as self-regulation, agency, and perseverance to thrive in the modern workplace. And in a report of key findings for the US released by the OECD yesterday, we put forth that to provide opportunities for students to develop these skills in the context of STEM learning requires intentional design across all levels of the educational system. From foundational principles to curriculum design principles, pedagogical approaches, and instructional activities. To facilitate this work, the Global STEM Alliance, an initiative of the New York Academy of Sciences dedicated to advancing STEM education worldwide, has developed a framework of best practices in STEM education. It is designed to serve as a first step on the pathway to aligning instruction with an emphasis on 21st century skills, active learning approaches, and supports for successful implementation, many of the things we've been talking about today. It is intended to be used by stakeholders across the education system, from curriculum designers, educators, and school leaders making procurement decisions, to researchers, policymakers, and funders, to ensure that their work reflects what we know from learning science. To develop this framework, the Academy uh, partnered with SRI Education, a collaboration that we believe has the potential to significantly impact STEM teaching and learning. The Academy has a 200-year history of advancing scientific research, education, and policy, and has built a global network of more than 20,000 members and 1,000 partner organizations across academia, industry, and the professional science community. SRI is an established leader um, in learning science research with deep expertise in STEM instructional design, implementation, and evaluation. Together, we hope to start bridging the gap between research and practice. So what does the framework look like? Uh, we've outlined 26 elements of quality STEM education across three fundamental areas. The first is core competencies. These are essential 21st century skills like critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, and collaboration, as well as attributes that support the development of those skills like agency, persistence, and social and cultural awareness. The second is instructional design, including principles like the integration of STEM content, active learning practices, and alignment of learning objectives and assessments. And finally, implementation, which includes aspect of, aspects of accessibility, adaptability, and scalability, including the presence of professional development supports. For each of these elements, the framework describes four degrees to which materials may exhibit this feature, from undeveloped to basic, developing, and exemplary. The principles outlined in the framework are based on current learning science and education research, and we've documented that in an accompanying Research Foundation's paper. Leveraging both the Academy's and SRI's extensive networks, we convened an International Advisory Board of STEM education experts to review and contribute to the development of the framework. I'd like to acknowledge some of the members who are here today, including Kathy Hurley, Yari Livonen, Poshan Lo, and Claudia Urea. So ultimately, our goal is to use this framework as a tool to improve STEM teaching and learning by applying it to evaluate instructional materials. To facilitate this, we established criteria for alignment worthy of certification by the Academy. 
Uh, we're focusing on essential skills that must be addressed by the design of the materials. Things like critical thinking, problem solving, communication, and collaboration. As well as evidence of sufficient supports for implementation, um, including accessibility, adaptability, and scalability, as well as the alignment of learning objectives and assessments. Um, we've examined four instructional programs as part of a pilot, and this included a range of instructional materials uh, produced by both large and small providers, both commercial and nonprofit, representing a range of subjects and grades, and intended for both formal and informal settings. Um, and each of these materials were reviewed by a panel of independent experts. We had three reviewers with advanced degrees and expertise in the subject matter, as well as one senior reviewer who moderated across the reviews and established final ratings and a final report of the alignment. I'm going to turn it over to Britta to talk a little bit about um, some of these uh, uh, studies in detail. One of the pieces of instructional material um, that we reviewed was RoboMatter, um, produced by RoboMatter in Pittsburgh. Um, it's ideas, it's called ideas, it's a computer science curriculum and it actually spans grade levels um, across um, both elementary, middle and high school. The reach of the program so far has been to 5,000 students um, and I think we'll all see it reaching a, a lot more going forward. Um, some highlights from the review. Um, these reviews take several weeks um, and then there's a moderation process after that and so we're really giving you just a, a taste of what, of what some of the highlights are that we found. One of them is that in, uh, across the units that we reviewed, um, the curriculum consistently got high rankings um, for the essential skills that uh, Hank was talking about. Also, they are the same skills um, that Dr. Schilling referred to as the kind of skills that you need to succeed in both STEM and non-STEM, so both uh, critical thinking, problem solving, et cetera. I will mention that uh, the review process takes into account whether the designers themselves identified those skills as a learning objective and considers whether or not it was an explicit goal. RoboMatter continued to hit those uh, high rankings despite the fact that they themselves did not identify some of those skills as the goals of their design. It speaks to the high quality and coherent approach across all of their units that's been very successful for them. The other thing that's really remarkable, and it's very important that I, I want to reiterate this point about the framework, is that it's not just only looking for high quality materials around essential skills, teaching, and learning, it's around the supports for teachers and for decision makers to think about how to use those materials in their system, in their classroom, in their school district, and maybe even more broadly, you know, for a minister of education, for example. So that ability to customize, think about my context, think about my local policy initiatives and how it aligns to the curriculum that I'm thinking about adopting. All of those supports are part of the, are part of the things that we're looking for as part of the review. Those are the essential components that we were hearing from the speakers earlier today looking for as part of a way to propagate or scale uh, what we know how to do really well. Yes? Um, so RoboMatter has those supports um, in spades, um, and it's one of the things that the reviewers were really, really pleased um, to see. Um, another thing uh, that we found with reviewing the RoboMatter materials that made them very successful is, again, this consistency across grade levels. So we've been talking about improvement in systems, and we're here we see a curriculum that actually helps from grade, early grades through later grades. So there's a, a across the grade consistency that we think is um, sometimes lacking in other materials, and in RoboMatter was extraordinarily, um, extraordinarily present, very, very coherent. Um, the reviewers were really excited to see that and thought that it was one of the unique characteristics of, of RoboMatter. The other thing I'll say about RoboMatter in this case is that the framework was developed to look across STEM curricula. And here you have a computer science curriculum that's getting high marks when held up to that high expectation for what I would consider a broader range of STEM skills um, that are being evaluated as part of the review. So that speaks to the high quality of, of this curriculum, being able to get high marks not only on the computational thinking and data literacy pieces, but also across other broader 
broader skills like problem solving, which you might not expect to see in spades in a curriculum, a, a computer science curriculum. RoboMatter does that very, very well. I'll also say that it speaks to the generalizability of the framework to be able to look at a, science, a computer science specific curriculum and hold it against us a, a broader framework and still see all of those fabulous features that you know we want to we want to support in curriculum design going forward.